So, Dexter's algorithm. Again, it's very, it's, it's a generalization of breadth first search to where the edges need not have unit edge cost. The idea is we're going to start from the origin. We kind of know it's up at the origin, not very hard to get from S to itself. And then we're going to basically grow, grow like a mold until it covers the entire graph. Okay, so we're inductively conquer the entire graph of this mold. And what we're, the invariant we're going to maintain is everything that we've sort of captured or covered so far, we will have correctly computed what shortest paths are. Uh, in that region. Okay, and then eventually when we've covered the entire graph, inductively we'll have computed shortest paths to everything. All right? So, and now I'm going to write this algorithm at a pretty high level at the moment. Okay, so don't worry about exactly how you would implement this and what data structures you'd use and so on. Well, I'll get to all that in due time. But for now, I want to focus conceptually on what this algorithm is and why it works. Okay, so there's going to be this set capital X. That's what the mold is covered already. And then there's going to be arrays A and B, which keep track of shortest path links and also the paths themselves. So, you know, from remember S is the origin. Okay, so from S to itself, we can get there uh, with length zero using the empty path. All right. So now let me just sort of be clear what the point of all this notation is. So what are we striving for? What is the point? So what we want is at termination for all possible destinations, little v, what we want to be true is that in our array A, we've computed the correct shortest path dis dis uh, distances. Remember, capital D is sort of the ground truth, or the correct answer. Capital D is the actual shortest path length from S to V. Capital A is what our algorithm is computing. So this is just saying our shortest path distances are correct, match the ground truth. And then we want, uh, we want our array B to have actual paths, okay? So B of V is going to contain the shortest path from S to V. Now what is capital X? Like I said, capital X is going to be the vertices that we've already covered. Okay, so vertices, I'll just say, whose A values we've already computed. So now we do essentially one loop, and that'll be it. So while there's stuff left, okay, so while, and, uh, up until the mold has completely covered the entire graph. So what do we got to do? So what we want to do is we want to grow sort of the conquered territory capital X by one node. So we want to take a node not in X and add it to X. So the question is how do we cleverly pick the way to do that? And it's pretty clever. So what we're going to think about is we're going to think about sort of the frontier between x and v minus x. All right, so at any given iteration, we have our vertices x, we have the other vertices v minus x. S, of course, starts in capital X and never leaves, so it's going to be there. And we look at the frontier, meaning edges that go from one of these sides to the other. Okay, so there could be edges going both frontward and backward. We're only going to care about the edges going frontward, right, because we're computing paths out of S. Okay. So generic iteration, this is what the graph, we can imagine the graph in this way. Okay. So again, this is just the thought. That's going to explain how we pick which node to add to X. And so what we're going to do is we're going to basically have the mold advance by one step by picking one of the edges that goes forward across this frontier. I have to tell you, if there's many such edges, I have to tell you which one we use. And uh, I'm going to need the board for that.
So among all edges, that cross the frontier, by which I mean the tail of the edge should be in capital X, but the head of the edge is not, so they go forward. We're going to pick the one, and this is the clever step, minimizing the following expression which I'm going to call the dykstra greedy criterion. AV plus CVW. Okay? So remember what this notation is. So what have we done? We found an edge which is crossing the frontier. The left endpoint, okay, the tail of the edge V is in capital X. And that means we've already computed an A value for it. We already think we know what its shortest path distance is. So it's well defined to write A of V. And then this is VW with some edge, so it has some cost, and we just add that in. Okay? So if there's 12 edges crossing the frontier, at least conceptually, we're just iterating through each of them, computing this number for each of those 12, and picking the best one, the one with it for which it's smallest. So whichever frontier crossing edge minimizes this, I'm going to give it a name, call it V star, W star. Okay, so remember W star is not in X, right? We only looked at edges which go, go from the left side to the right side. So the head of this arc is not in X. So that's a candidate to add, and that's what we do. We add W star to X. Now when we add it to X, we have to sort of give it guesses or assignments in the A array and the B array. So we're going to set its, what we think its shortest path distance to, we're going to set it to be the shortest path distance to its tail, plus the cost of the edge itself. And we're going to set the corresponding path to be whatever the path was that we already computed to its tail, with this edge appended onto the other, uh, the, uh, oops, sorry, that's a B with this edge itself appended at the, ed at the end of the path. Okay? So let me give you an example, and then I'll take questions.